How five unfair bank secrets keep you poor. What if I told you banks count on your ignorance to make billions from your money, while you get 0.01% from your own savings account? Wow! Welcome, my friends, to Unchained Earnings, where we don't just make videos. We make detailed blueprints that show you exactly how to build your financial dreams from the ground up. Today, we're diving into the five secrets banks don't want you to know. You're about to learn exactly how to protect your financial future. Prepare to shatter the illusion of financial security and discover what lies beneath the polished facade of the banking system. Secret number one, borrowing from banks. Back in the summer of 2012, when the sun was shining and Facebook was ruling the social media scene, Mark Zuckerberg, the man behind the iconic blue interface, made a move that raised a few eyebrows in the real estate world. He snagged a swanky new pad, just a stone's throw away from his Facebook headquarters, for a cool $6 million. Now, you'd think a billionaire like Zuck would just whip out his checkbook and pay for it on the spot, right? But nope, not this tech titan. Instead, he decided to take out a 30-year mortgage. Hold up, you might be thinking, why would a guy worth billions bother with a mortgage? Well, here's the juicy part. It's all about the magic of free money. Yes, you heard that correctly, free money. Before you start thinking the banks have lost their minds, let me explain. It all boils down to interest rates. When the interest rate on a loan is lower than the inflation rate, you're essentially borrowing money for free. And that's exactly what happened in Zuck's case. His mortgage came with an interest rate just over 1%, while inflation was dancing around 2 to 3%. So not only did he get a sweet deal on his new digs, but he also managed to make a profit just by borrowing money. Talk about a win-win. But how does this sorcery work? Imagine borrowing a million bucks at a 1% interest rate. If you park that million in a savings account with an average rate of return of 2.4%, you'd be making $24,000 a year. Meanwhile, your loan payment is only $10,000, leaving you with a sweet $14,000 in profit annually just by borrowing money. And when you're playing with figures in the millions or billions, that profit margin skyrockets faster than a viral cat video. And that, my friends, is just the tip of the iceberg. With a war chest of billions, Zuck could make Scrooge McDuck's money bin look like a piggy bank. Of course, this financial wizardry is most effective when dealing with large sums of money. Even a tiny difference in interest rates can mean a hefty profit. Remember, the next time you're tempted to plunk down your hard-earned dough on a mansion, remember the gospel according to Zuck. Why use your own money when you can play Monopoly with someone else's? It's not just a financial strategy, it's a billionaire's playbook for living the dream, one mortgage at a time. Secret number two, greater wealth, lower interest. Imagine the banking world as a high stakes game of Monopoly, where the players aren't just in it for fun, they're in it to win big. Picture the banks as the shrewd players who know every trick in the book to secure their place as the reigning champions of capitalism. But hey, who can blame them? In this cutthroat game, it's all about those sweet, sweet profits, baby. Now, in this Monopoly game, each bank has its own set of shareholders breathing down its neck, demanding returns on their investments. So naturally, the banks are sweating bullets to ensure they rake in the cash and keep their shareholders happy. After all, it's survival of the fittest in the financial jungle. But hey, banks aren't the bad guys here. They're just playing the game smart. They want to make sure they're lending to people who can pay them back, with interest. It's like in The Godfather, where Don Corleone says, It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business. Banks are all about business. If you're sitting pretty on a mountain of cash like Tony Stark, the banks are rolling out the red carpet for you. They know you've got the resources to back up your borrowing habits, no questions asked. But if you're more of a struggling Peter Parker, living paycheck to paycheck, and relying on Aunt May's meatloaf for sustenance, well, let's just say the banks aren't exactly throwing cash your way with open arms. If you want to get the best deal from a bank, you've got to level up your financial game. They love working with people who have their financial ducks in a row because those folks are less likely to bail on their loans. If you can boost your savings, chip away at your debt, or get into some income-generating investments, you'll be on the fast track to getting that sweet deal from the bank. Show the banks you're a player worth betting on. Who knows, with the right moves, you might just pass go and collect more than $200. Secret number three, creating new money. Did you know banks have a superpower? They can create money out of thin air. It's like a real-life Hogwarts spell. But instead of waving wands, they're typing on keyboards. Here's the lowdown. 
When you deposit money into your bank account, the bank doesn't just let it gather dust. They lend it out to people who want to buy things like cars or houses, and they charge those folks interest. But how does this magic work? Well, when you deposit money, the bank sees an opportunity to make some magic. They lend most of your money to others who want to buy things like cars or houses and charge them interest. The crazy part, the interest rate they charge is often higher than what they pay you. So while you're earning a tiny bit, the bank is making a fortune. I know you're wondering, how can the bank lend out my money and still let me think it's there? Enter fractional reserve banking. Banks only have to keep a fraction of the deposits in reserve, usually around 10%. The rest, they can lend it out. Let me paint it out for you. For every thousand you deposit, the bank can actually create another $900 and lend it out. That means the total amount of money in circulation jumps to $1,900, and the bank basically made $900 out of nothing. It's like they're playing Monopoly with real money, except it's all just numbers on a screen. Crazy, right? But that's the magic of banking. Understanding how banks operate with your deposits isn't just about peeking behind the financial curtain. It's like gaining a secret financial superpower. With this knowledge, you become the master of your money, knowing exactly where it is and how it's working for you. This knowledge is like having a financial crystal ball. You'll know exactly how much of your money is ready for instant use and how much is out there in the lending world, potentially earning you more. Armed with this insight, you can strategically decide how much to keep in your savings for rainy days and how much to invest for brighter financial futures. Plus, knowing about fractional reserve banking might inspire you to explore other banking options, like credit unions or online banks. Credit unions are the financial equivalent of a cozy community garden where members sow their savings and reap the benefits collectively. Each depositor is not just a customer, but a stakeholder with a voice in decision-making and a share of the yields. Online banks, on the other hand, are like a digital haven in the financial desert, offering a refreshing alternative to traditional brick-and-mortar institutions. With a virtual storefront, they provide convenience at your fingertips, serving up financial services with a side of tech-savvy flair. These alternatives operate under different rules and offer unique perks and services, making them worth a closer look. It's like discovering a whole new world of banking beyond the traditional brick-and-mortar giants. Secret number four, credit cards, a powerful weapon. Did you know that a whopping 70% of Americans with credit card debt are facing a tough battle to pay it off this year? It's like being stuck in a financial maze with no easy way out. Credit card debt isn't a walk in the park. It's more like a roller coaster ride with interest rates sometimes exceeding 36%. That's enough to make anyone's wallet cry out in pain. What's even more alarming is that over half of those in debt have been stuck in this cycle for at least a year. It's like being trapped in a never-ending loop. For some, it could take over three years to break free. And for others, the light at the end of the tunnel is nowhere in sight. Imagine living with that kind of uncertainty hanging over your head. But here's the real kicker. Banks are loving every minute of this debt saga. They're raking in the cash from interest payments while many are struggling to make ends meet. It's like a real-life David versus Goliath with banks playing the role of the giant. But what's the lesson in all of this? While credit cards can be a useful tool for building credit, they can also be a double-edged sword. It's crucial to be financially responsible and live within your means. As tempting as those shiny new credit card offers may be, it's best to think twice before diving headfirst into the debt trap. After all, you don't want to end up like a character in a financial horror story, battling debt monsters for years on end. Secret number five, money losing value. Ever wondered how much your money is actually growing in that savings account of yours? You might think it's a sweet deal, right? Well, brace yourself for a reality check. Even the big players like Citibank usually offer interest rates that are as exciting as watching paint dry. Sure, there might be a few banks out there offering slightly better rates, but let's face it, they're not exactly hitting it out of the park. Here's the kicker. If your money is only growing at, say, 4%, but inflation is cruising along at 7%, you're actually losing purchasing power. It's like trying to fill a leaky bucket. No matter how much you pour in, it's never enough. Imagine your money is like Mario in a never-ending level, jumping to grab coins. Each year, inflation adds more obstacles and makes the level taller. If Mario can't jump high enough to get more coins than the level adds, he's stuck in the same place, despite all his efforts. To keep Mario moving forward, he needs to find ways to jump higher than the level grows. Likewise, to beat inflation, you need your money to grow faster than prices rise. 
Understanding this helps you avoid being stuck on a financial level, constantly struggling to make progress. Instead, you can level up your wealth by making savvy money moves. At the end of the day, banks are more like those temporary parking spots in a busy city, convenient, but not exactly the place to grow your wealth. Before you park your cash in a savings account, make sure you're not shortchanging yourself in the long run. Discovering what banks don't tell us changes everything. With this knowledge, you're now equipped to navigate the banking world smarter and more confidently. It's time to take control, use these insights to secure your financial future, and step into the light of financial freedom. Big thanks for joining us today. If this peek behind the banking curtain opened your eyes, show some love with a like, and subscribe for more revelations that put the power back in your pocket. Got a moment? Drop a comment below, tell us which secret was a total shocker, and how you'll turn these insights into action. Don't leave just yet. Click the next video, unlock wealth with these five online tips, and keep building your path to freedom. The link's right here on the screen and in the description. See you there. Until next time, this is Unchained Earnings reminding you to keep smiling, keep learning, and above all else, stay unchained.